Don't worry about my do-rag, I'm still learning how to tie one. Let's get into the review. Alright y'all, what's going on everybody? This be your boy Scotty by Nature TV and we're here for my recap of The Bell Collective Season 1, Episode 4. Now before we get into the review and everything that went on on tonight's episode, I want to send a special shout out to the executive producer, um, Carlos King, okay? Now Carlos King, um, who was also a producer for the Housewives of Atlanta, yes I know my shit, you know, I read up on every goddamn thing, I've always known this, whatever. But he um, retweeted my last review on Bill Collective, and he also um, retweeted a, some, some of my comments. He even tweeted me tonight. So, shout out to Carlos King, child. You know, we see each other in this bitch. You know what I'm saying? We see each other, okay? So, without further ado, let's get into the Bill Collective, okay? As you all know, this is my neck of the woods and all this other shit. Y'all already know how... How excited I get whenever this show come on. Because I love talking about shit that's going on in my area, okay? So, let's get into the shit. Okay, so Tamara and I think it's her friend Ramona, okay? They sit down and they have lunch, alright? And they discuss Tamara's dilemma with her having kids in the future, her married life, and basically her career. Now, Tamara is basically saying how she's been on Dish Nation. She's done this, she's done that. And now she's, one, now she's ready to go from being a local um, personality to a more national media personality and that's what you would want to do you know what I mean like that's really what it is that's what you strive to be is something national that's just like with me and Jamar like we're on YouTube but now we're moving into the podcast arena and we want to get to a point to where we are um you know, nationwide, you know what I mean? Like, we all want that. So, I mean, she's going in the right direction. You know, she's done um, Dish Nation. She's done um, Bring It, you know. So, she wants to do more things. But being, being with that being said, though, she brings up the stuff about the conversation with her parents and how they felt about her not having any kids at this point in time. You know, Ramona really gave her story about how she wanted to have kids, but it was all about the bag. It was all about the money for her. And she really wanted to have kids, but it was just like my career or this, my career or this, you know what I mean? And, they, and you know, it was just like, I think she had, I think, I think it was something about time went by and it was just too late for her to have kids and all of this other stuff. So Tamara is listening to all of that stuff and she's taking it on in. You know what I mean? Like she's got a lot to think about at this point. She done froze her eggs and shit, but she's not exactly where she wants to be in her career. And I know that sometimes women, um, don't want to have kids until they know that their career is where it needs to be. But sometimes, you know, you know, you got to treat life like it's your last day. You know what I mean? And if you want to have a baby, go ahead and have that baby and let the baby have that journey with you in elevating. You never know. The baby just may be your more of a reason for you to elevate so you can do it for not only yourself but for your child. So even though Tamara with her damn radio ass voice, because when she be in these confessionals and be in these scenes, she talk like she on the radio. And it's bad enough that her voice annoys me on, on Hot 97. But it is what it is, child. So, um, but I don't dislike I like Tamara, I just think her voice is just like a, like a chalkboard, like baby, like girl, you know what I mean? But I understand, and this is a very a very compelling storyline, so I can give her that much. So Letitia meets up with the councilman, they're up town in the Fair Street area and she was talking about how she wants to get with other entrepreneurs and buy the block back. Now that's the crystal ball building that she is more so interested in. She wants to have her brunches and everything else up there and they told her that that building is not for sale. And she was surprised that the building wasn't for sale. It's up for lease. And if she wants to lease it, she also got to get that shit remodeled because it is um a big, it is an older building. It's a historic. Is in a historical registry, just like this house that we live in is in a historical registry. Is in a historic re registry. I'm sorry. Um, when we moved here, that was the biggest thing. Was that it's rich in history. We're the first African American family to live in this house. So, and it's in the historic registry. You know what I mean? We're in the historical part of town. So I totally understand. And he also told her that. 
um, it's going to be like close to $2 million to get the shit renovated. So that's a lot of money. Now, Letitia, do you got that? That's the only question I got because I don't normally count nobody pockets. But do you got that? That's all I'm saying. Now, Missy Elliott and her son, Jerez, they go to therapy, okay? So Missy Elliott and Magoo, they go to therapy. And um, she played the recording for the therapist. And he basically said that he didn't want to hear nothing else. He already knew where it was going. I just feel like at this point with Missy Elliott talking about everything that she goes through with her son, I just think that it's time for her to cut off um, the shackles. Um, take the damn breast out of his mouth and let him be a man. He already got three damn kids. He's a father three times at the age of 21. It's about time for you to take that damn breast out of his mouth and stop breastfeeding him because at this point he's still being babyfied by you but i do think that the reason why you're doing this is because you're overcompensating for the life that you did not have when you were a child now when you were a child your mother wasn't there for you and probably being that you had him at an early age you had him at 18 you knew that your mother wasn't there for you your mother left you alone and you don't want to subject your own child to that same pain that your mother subjected you to which i totally understand because again i've spoken about this on previous videos that my mother um wasn't raised by my grandmother at all um my grandmother gave my mother away to my great grandmother when my mother was six weeks old she raised her on up and not only was my mother raised by my great grandmother but she was also raised by my great aunts and all of this other stuff so my my grandmother had no um hand in raising my mom at all me and my grandmother don't even have a relationship i don't fuck with her and it is what it is like i just treat her as what she is an absentee grandmother okay no hate no nothing but i just don't fuck with her i ain't gonna fake the fuck with nobody just because they old now i ain't finna do all this shit but that's probably why she overcompensates and do so much for him because her mother didn't do it for her and that's that's something that is internal with her and that's probably why she's so damn mean and mean spirited because of the trauma that she endured with her with her own mother and she and because her mother did not give her that kind of love she doesn't know how to give it to other people she barely knows how to give it to her son really because she feels like um buttering him up and showering him with money and taking care of him the way that a mother shouldn't be taking care of a 21 year old is doing the right thing no sometimes you got to be tough on him and you got to so pumpkin is at her business and she basically told her people that you know i'm trying to get my hair cut line going I ain't got time for Letitia in this brunch. Like, I don't want to be around all this negativity. The last time I went to a brunch, I got attacked. My business was in question. I ain't got time for it, and I totally understand. Okay, so this is the part that I'm going to touch on for a split second because I don't want to stay on it for too long because of the simple fact it's so heavy and so deep. But one thing about it, when Letitia and Antoinette went to the Civil Rights Museum, that was a lot. And I think that that conversation was needed. Like, sometimes when you go to Civil Rights Museums and you think about all the things that us black people had to go through as um, being slaves and being treated a certain type of way just because of the color of our skin and we really realized that we really didn't do nothing but just be black. We really didn't do anything but come as God presented us as. We didn't do anything to deserve what we got. And sometimes I don't, that's why I don't like to watch like racist, like race, like movies about racism and things of that nature because it's a trigger and it just brings out a lot of frustration as to me not understanding why we went through the things that we went through um i know that when my sister was going to tuvalu um you know they were talking about civil rights and african americans um having a right to vote and my great grandfather um the late reverend simon johnson that was my great grandfather he was a, he was actually marching he was actually in one of the history books at tuvalu college he was marching to help um to get black people to vote and doing all of that stuff and I thought that was amazing that my great grandfather was a part of that rich history that we speak about so um it's a lot of things that um that will trigger us in a in a quick second when we go to a civil rights museum or watch movies about racism and civil rights and all this other stuff and just knowing that with this current climate where we have the black lives matter movement and racism still being um, prominent these days especially down south where, where I'm from um, it's, it's a lot so um, I commend Carlos King for showing that and I also commend Letitia and Antoinette for even having that conversation on um, the show and basically showing us a lot of things like that was a lot like I didn't even want to talk about it on my review because I try to keep uh, my channel 
um, as entertaining as possible and keep it more so about you escaping from reality. But sometimes I got to bring you to reality, right? It got to be different layers to me. So it is what it is. Now, Tamara decided to go on a date with a man that she was with for 16 years and he never made a wifey. So when they go to this restaurant down there in Flowood, because that's where it is, table 100, that's in Flowood. They going down there to the restaurant and god damn he fine like that's all I could say when we were sitting up there watching this shit I'm like this nigga fine as a oh <clears throat> girl did he look like that back then cause if he look, back, look, like, look like that back then and he look like that now I understand why he trying to get that old thing back cause baby he look like he can oh god I'll put it on him make him wanna marry me put it on him make him wanna marry me but they're just basically talking about the things that happened in their relationship and why it didn't work out and all of this other stuff. And he just said that it's a different person back then. It was Tamara. Now it's Tamara Cherie now and all of this other stuff. So it's basically about her wanting kids and he wanting kids. And it looks like they're on the same page. But I just I just feel like sometimes... It's it's so like I know a lot of people online was basically saying they're ex for a reason, but sometimes re a rekindling of a of an old flame is not so bad. It just depends on how you left off. But sometimes it's not always um wise to go back to someone that you previously dated because it didn't work out for a reason, right? So that's where it is. Now, uh Letitia is hosting yet another Southern Bill brunch, okay? Like another one. And I'm like, child, I really hope this one goes better than the last one. When I say I tied this shit up too damn hard, my head is killing me. I can't wait to finish this video so I can take this shit off and try to tie it up again. Shit. She wants to this time make her announcement about Fear Street and this particular one. Now Antoinette comes in with her friend Kaylon. I don't that was strike one. Antoinette, I don't know why the hell you brought her here when this is about black excellence amongst black women and she's not going to relate. So why did you bring her? I don't know, but we're going to continue, honey. She was like, well, you know, at the end of it all, Latrice is not here. So that means Marie won't have nobody to fight. So as soon as she come in, um, Antoinette comes in to greet Missy Elliott. And Missy Elliott already trying to give her a problem. Last time I checked, Antoinette did not give Missy Elliott no problem. Her problem was with Pumpkin, okay? Her problem was with her. Um, so why are you giving internet all of this damn fever, Missy Elliott? See, the thing about Super Duper Fly is the fact that she always want to be seen and want to be noticed for the wrong goddamn thing. You got all this shit going on at home, but here you go, here you go, coming around women, starting shit. Sit your ass down. Like Missy Elliott said, she's a bitch when they say my name. Talk about jump, but won't look my way. She's a bitch. See, I got my cheese. So back on up while I roll up my sleeve. She's a bitch. So then Tamara starts the conversation out by asking everybody, have they ever have they ever been on the receiving end of racism in Mississippi? Just about everybody raised their hand, except for probably one person. Now, for me, I never just um I never really endured like hardcore racism but it may be little things that I just totally forgot about that was very minor like I remember getting out of my car going to work walking inside my job while I was on the phone with my mother I was on the phone with her and I was like yeah girl blah 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 and as I was coming by there was this like Caucasian lady getting her car and I was walking past her car and when she saw me coming towards her she did me like this as if I was finna do something to her I guess you can consider that racism, right? Like, that that's thats a part of racism. Like, okay, you see this black man walking up on the phone, walking towards you, and you you do this because you're thinking that, okay, because he's black, he's going to try to take my purse, or because he's black, he's going to do this. So I guess that's that's a part of racism, because I know in, in, in probably previous videos on here, I said that I'd never just endure racism, but I, I'm guessing... This was very minor to me, so I just forgotten about it. But this had this actually happened to me about like three or four years ago. So um, I guess this is like I'm, I guess you could say I've experienced a minor racism, but not the hardcore type of racism. That's what I haven't experienced. And then they started saying that some black women don't get as much racism sometimes because of the color of their skin, because of their lighter shade. You know, then there's the colorism conversation, and as they're having a conversation that's well needed, Kaylon starts crying and walks out of the room and excuses herself, which she probably should have. It probably was the right thing for her to do because she doesn't understand. But it could have been an educational moment for her as well because she's a white woman 
and she doesn't really understand the things that black people went through. So when she went out there, I just, we don't talk about black people like this. We don't talk about black people like this. Girl, shut the fuck up. Shut up. Shut up. Like, you can't, just shut up. Just shut up. Girl, girl like, shut up. Because you can say whatever you want to say, Kaylon, but the truth is the truth and facts is fucking facts at the end of the day. Like, okay, no, you probably don't talk about black people like that, but there are, they're just, they're, like, they're, they're maybe, there may be some white people that do talk about black people like that. You just don't see them. You just don't know them. You probably do know them, but they just don't do it around you. Like, it doesn't matter. Like, at the end of the day, it happens. They're speaking about their experiences. If you're not a racist, okay, that's cool, but you need to just shut the hell up. And I, I know that people was mad at the women for going out there trying to see if she was okay. I mean, she's human, so I do kind of understand why they went out there, but I don't feel like they needed to explain anything to her. And what she, the behavior that she displayed was that Karen shit. I'm finna cry to make everybody feel sorry for me and everybody run over here to, to, to my side and, and, and console me because this ain't about me. That's what it came across as. She was doing that Karen shit, and that was really piss me off with her and on top of that don't let her ass foot okay i ain't gonna go there so they get her to come back in and antoinette was trying to explain her side with kaylin's side to the girls okay which did not score no points with um antoinette with some of these people that watched the show i saw the comments child they were not happy about that but marie missy elliott says that this ain't about you this is about leticia so we need to just bring it all back to leticia for once, I agree with Missy Elliott on this. I do feel like Kaylin was really making this about her. I get that we were having a conversation about racism and colorism, but this is a conversation that you would never understand and something that you would never get. So you just need to stay the fuck out of the conversation because no matter what you say, you're going to offend somebody. Even if you ain't trying to, you're going to. So stay the fuck out of the conversation. But I do think that Missy Elliott and her sidekick... Um, Missy Elliott and um what's what's somebody else? Missy Elliott and Monifa was doing way too much because Monifa walked her ass over there, standing over this woman, you know, acting like she was for the whoop her ass or something. You know what I mean? Like just stay your ass over there with Missy Elliott. You ain't got to get in her space to get your point across. At the end of the day, we know that this is all about Letitia. We already know that Kaylon trying to make this shit about her. So at the end of the day, just leave Karen alone and just lead us about Letitia. That, that, that's just what it is. But Missy Elliott was wrong but right all at the same time. But Monifa did too much when she walked her ass over there trying to trying to stand over there near the woman and get good. It was just too much. But this was a to be continued episode, okay? To be continued. So, um, I hope you guys liked the video. Be sure to like, rate, comment subscribe and share this video do whatever you see fit if you want to follow me on any of my social media my twitter and my instagram is at the bottom with that being said you guys i'm out of here till my next video i'll holla at you later baby peace out